Okay, we have an example here. A wrecking ball smashes through a wall. Does the ball put a larger force on the wall than the wall puts on the ball? And if we think about that, the ball pushes on the wall in some direction. So to the right, maybe. And then it's asking about the wall, which is pushing on the ball. And if the ball was pushing onto the wall to the right, then the wall must be pushing on the ball to the left. And if we think about this in terms of what we were looking at in the last video, we can clearly see that this is a third law pair. And so the answer to this question, does it apply more force? The answer is a definitive no. These forces are a third law pair and are therefore equal. All right, so those must be equal. So the wall breaks, but that does not mean it is exerting less force on the ball than the ball is on it. What made the wall break is that the wall could not withstand the amount of force. The force holding a particular brick in place wasn't enough compared to the force of the ball pushing on it. All right, let's look at another example. Here we have a man who weighs 700 newtons standing on a table, and the force that's exerted on the table by the man depends on whether he's accelerating or not. So he could accelerate by jumping into the air or by just bouncing up and down, just getting on the balls of your feet and bouncing up and down. And if you've never tried this and you have a bathroom scale, stand on the bathroom scale and then just, just bob up and down, kind of bounce up and down without leaving the scale, don't jump, just, just bob up and down a little bit and you'll see the reading on the scale change. Okay? Especially if you have one of the old analog ones which aren't very common anymore and it has the, the mechanical dial right there. You can really see it on those quite well. All right. So let's analyze this a little bit more. A free body diagram for the man. Quite simple. There is the normal force and the weight, and that's it. And then if we analyze this, if we say, okay, that's the positive y direction, okay, up is the positive y. Now we can use the second law, F equals ma. So we're, we're applying this law in the y direction, and we're writing this Greek letter sigma here to be the summation of. So this, on the left-hand side, that's the net force. So the net force is however big the normal force is, minus the weight is equal to mAy. And so then if we add the weight to both sides, we see here that the normal force is only equal to the weight if the acceleration is zero. And so if he's bouncing up and down, his acceleration is not zero. Okay? Or if he jumps into the air and then he's landing, okay? if he's taking off or landing, his acceleration is not zero because he's speeding up or slowing down. And anytime that happens, his normal force is not equal to the weight. Okay? So normal force not equal to weight when acceleration is not equal to zero. All right, now let's draw a free body diagram for the table. The table has weight. Maybe the table has more weight than the man, so we'll draw that longer. Okay, that's the weight of the table, and then we'll just call that one plain W for the weight of the man. Okay, and maybe we'll, just to be clear here, and there's a normal force, and this, well, wait a minute, there's a normal force over there. So what normal force is this? This is the normal force of the floor pushing up on the table. And let's think about this normal force a little bit more. This is the normal force of the table pushing up 
on the man. Now wait a minute, if the table pushes up on the man, the man also pushes down on the table. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a downward force here, a normal force. This is the force of the man pushing down on the table. Okay, now you think, oh, couldn't we just put the man's weight here? Well, we could if the acceleration were equal to zero. But anytime the acceleration is not equal to zero, then the normal force and weight are not the same. So he will push down on the table with different amounts of force depending on what he's doing. If, think about it a little bit more. As he's bouncing up and down, he could break the table that way. If he jumped into the air, he could break the table by doing that. Either the takeoff or the landing. During both of those, he's exerting more force. Are there any third law pairs visible on these two free body diagrams? Well, let's look carefully. How about this force and this force? Well, they look equal, but remember, they're not equal if he's bouncing up and down. And not only that, they're not a third law pair because they're both acting on the same object. This is the force of the earth pulling down on the man. This is the force of the table pushing up on the man. That's not a third law pair, those two. However, we talked about this before, this force here and this force down here, those are a third law pair. The table pushes up on the man and the man pushes down on the table. These are a third law pair. All right, those are the only third law pair that's visible here, but every force that you see has a third law pair. Okay, if we were to draw a free body diagram for the floor, it would be kind of a weird thing to do. But if we do that, then we will see the third law pair to this force, which is the table pushing down on the floor. Or if we were to draw a free body diagram for the earth, then it would have the third law pair to this, which would be the man pulling up on the earth. Because this force is the earth pulling down on the man. But the only third law pair where we can see both of the forces in the pair is this one right here.